But I want to know for you, the fan, watching that game, do you now understand? Like, do you now understand what MSU went through in 15 and what you're going to go through now? And it is the horrifying realization that your best team in 10 years, 20 years, quarter of a century, is still not even in the same football stadium as Georgia. That the offensive line, and this is where I got the game horribly wrong and Rico got it terrifyingly right. Your offensive line that we were told is the best actually looked like a group of little boys out there. Literally, your offensive line was made to look juvenile. Um, For instance, Aiden Hutchinson. Now, I, I've said this for a while. I'm Team Thibodeau. I'm not knocking Aiden Hutchinson. But Aiden Hutchinson looked small, slow, uh-huh. and weak. Yep. yep. Well, weird, because he was with NFL talent on the other side. And you know what? Played the game of his life against OSU, but the reality is maybe you guys are a little out over your skis here with the Hutchinson stuff. The point is... Michigan went out there, and they could play that game 100 times. They would lose 100 times. Now, did they play their best ball? No. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think Georgia did either. The point is, this is the terrifying reality of college football. Like, your season was awesome. You won the Big Ten. You beat OSU. But make no mistake about it. The measuring stick got cracked over your ass. So now the question is, do you think you can somehow get there? Because the answer for most fan bases, including my own, is no, not likely. It's just a bridge too far. But I want to know where fans are at, Rico, before we get into Harbaugh's comments, before we start talking Harbaugh to Vegas, before we talk about Cade McNamara uh, getting spit in his face. Wait, wait, wait. Harbaugh to Vegas? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Uh, you may not be allowed to do that. Mark. It's Harbaugh rumor season. We have to do uh, this. It's a badge of honor. Uh, I may have to pump the brakes on that one. He Call should go. You. He really should. Look at this oh, weather okay. compared to Vegas. The kids will be happier. Go. Oh, the point is we have so much to talk about, but we need to rap about that game. We do. I mean, because when you look at that game, when, when you look at Michigan, you saw the difference between being elite and being good or great. Okay, you can say you had a great season. That's fine. You're not elite. Georgia showed you what elite is, and Georgia powered it down midway third quarter. They just said, okay, we're now going to save some stuff for Alabama. You went out there, and from the opening drive, it was a mismatch. You saw that. You thought maybe you can come back here. And I remember they tried to do that slow play where they're doing a fake double reverse and Cade McNamara is like oh I'm gonna hit the guy no no son you're about to get sacked 13 yards behind the line of scrimmage you can't Michigan found out what Michigan State found out and what a lot of Big Ten teams find out there's a difference between being Big Ten good and being good Michigan was Big Ten good yeah you know Aiden Hutchinson was Big Ten And, and guess what Rico you can still say your season was an incredible success. You can yeah. still say you had a really good football team. You're still Big Ten champions. But make no mistake about it. And this is where I want to bring the first of two hardball quotes in. Because this is why no one likes you. This is why nobody can tolerate you. The hyperbole never ends. Jim Harbaugh calling this one of the great seasons in Michigan football history. In what world? You lost to Michigan State up the road. Which any great season in Michigan football history cannot feature that. And two, you didn't just lose your bowl game. You got emasculated. And that's not a shot. It's reality. Guys, it was 27-3, to and Kirby Smart went, we're good. Didn't even bother late half. And everything, look, we'll talk about this a little bit later. When your football team takes the field and is made to look small, made to look weak, made to look like you don't belong, that's not just a loss. Hey, MSU went through it, and you just went through it as well. It's a reality check to how far the gap is. Look, I I know how badly the media wants to tell you you are Clemson, you are Ohio State, you are bat. You're not. You're not. We're not. And there's a long road to go. And no one quarterback or one player is going to fix it. No. You found out you weren't even close. 
You found out the same thing the state found out in 2015. Yeah, and, and look, I got here's the this, here's the level, and you're here. I got it completely wrong as far as the line of scrimmage, where I thought they'd hold their water a little bit. I thought the O line, mm-hmm. no, I didn't think they'd have a lot of success running it, but I thought the O line would at least compete. Uh, the O line, well, was here's the thing, ravaged. Right? Well, yeah, because Georgia's defense, the front seven. The best in the nation. I think too many people saw the Alabama game and said, oh, well, they're, they're beatable. Guys, that's just what Nick Saban does. He knows the secret to the code to beating other Nick Saban disciples. But if you watch Georgia for the rest of the year, and then people said, well, Georgia didn't play anybody. Actually, they did. They just made teams look really bad. And I think we discredited Georgia a lot. Yeah, but the reality now, what, is what we talked about. Michigan didn't play anybody. Look at the reality. They played Michigan State and Ohio State. They went one yep. and one. The Big yep. Ten wasn't good this year. And guess what? MSU benefited. Right? Who did MSU play exactly? So now you go out and play Georgia, and I, I, I'll be honest. The other thing, too, I, Hutchinson and Ajabo got absolutely dominated. Yeah. That is a red flag to me. You cannot look like that when all the chips are down in a big game. That was They were horrific. See, that was the one for me, and, and, and I had a uh, friend of mine, on uh, Mike Griffith, who writes for the Georgia, he follows Georgia Bulldogs, and he said, because I was like, well, how do you handle the Michigan defensive line? And he said, you got to remember, Georgia's offensive line practices against the Georgia defense every day. They go up against the best defense every day in practice. You saw that. There was nothing that Michigan could do that the Georgia offensive line wasn't ready and handled. I mean – Aiden Hutchinson, you know, sometimes he just had an offensive tackle. Sometimes they chipped out and, and put a, a, a running back or a tight end on him. But he they they nullified both of them. I think he finished with three tackles in the entire game. It was a bad look for him. Georgia showed how much superior both offensive and defensive lines were. Yeah, it, it, and, and again, two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Look, I just want to know if if your eyes were opened a little bit. I want to know how much of a reality check that was. Because let's face it, you guys are victims to the cult. You guys are victims to the PR. And look, to a certain extent, I think all of us got fooled. Like, I thought you'd compete. Absolutely thought you'd compete in that game. The way that that went, it was a joke. And frankly, that's just not how I saw that going. And I think the talent gap is, is, is clearly obvious. But guess what? That's what Harbaugh was hired to fix. That's what Harbaugh yeah, is brought here to do. And I, I'll tell you this, the same thing that broke Mark D'Antonio in 15, this is a come-to-Jesus moment for Jimmy Goodtimes uh-huh. because you're in year seven and you finally slayed the dragon, you finally got home, it was a magical year, and you get to the playoff and this is what's there. A normal, well-adjusted adult would have a an off-season of introspection and figuring out, how am I going to do this? Because I'll tell you what, and like Rico, you and I talked about this. We'll get to the Cade McNamara stuff later. Look, th- this idea that uh, J.J. McSizzle's going to fix it all and we can throw Cade McNamara in the garbage now, because I see that already happening. Guys, if you think this is about one player or you think this is about one personnel decision, you're missing the greater point here. Yeah. This was a really statement that... Michigan football is nowhere close to where it ultimately wants to be. Now, Harbaugh can sell you on this is just the beginning. Okay, but I need to know how they're going to close that gap. I need to understand how they're going to elevate themselves. Well, Mike, here's the funny thing about it. Georgia's starting 22 was better than the Michigan starting 22. It, maybe if you went to the transfer portal and maybe brought some people in, but if Michigan's just going to go straight recruiting – Seven years in, you see what your recruiting has been like for seven years. All the players you thought yeah. were these great players are not. But I'll say I mean, this, Rico, let's, let's, and people might get upset, but I think it's the truth. And last I checked, I don't really care if people get upset. I think you, the average Michigan fan, you're just fine with what happened Friday. You're fine with and, it because you won the Big hold Ten on, hold on. and you beat you Ohio State. This. You got a bell for me? You do have a bell for me. Yeah. No, I, I think I you're do. just fine. I think you're you just fine getting backhanded by the SEC 
and you'll be happy if you get there again in a couple of years. I, I just, I don't think you want the ultimate prize. Here's why this season was a great season for Michigan. This is why Harbaugh said this, Mike. You beat Ohio State when everything was on the line at home. The Big Ten title was right there, and you dominated the game. That's why it's a great year. Michigan State, you don't care because you won the Big Ten and you slayed the Dragon. That's the only thing. That's the bowl mentality. Beat Ohio State and who gives a damn to what happens in a bowl game. There it is. But to me, well – you can see you can see what's already happening. They're setting it up for bow era football with these non conference schedules, but that's a different argument for a mm-hmm. different day. The point I'm making, I I'm not satisfied. Like MSU got there and they haven't they haven't gotten back, but I, I'm not okay just getting there and then getting destroyed. Look, if Michigan competed in this game, I, it's a different tenor. I'll leave it to the Michigan fans to tell me how they feel. Uh, but th- that is as eye opening as it gets. Because it's a statement of reality of you're not, on your best day, maybe Vegas had that right. On your best day, maybe you're a touchdown worse. Maybe. And the reality is, if Georgia wanted to, they could have put a 50-burger up. They could have. That, that, that's, they, they called that's off brutal. the dogs, seriously. Right. And yeah. this is not a Georgia offense that anyone thinks is great. This is not a big-time SEC offense. But they yeah, think about it. Kenny was wanted. talking about Stetson Bennett like he's this loser. Like, yeah, he yeah, looks pretty but, good. But you to know me. what, Rico? That, I brought this up the other day, and and you were on vacation. And I said it. I go. Normally, you make the playoff. You're going to see Trevor Lawrence. You're going to see Justin Fields. You're going to see Deshaun Watson. You're going to see the creme de la creme. They walked into a five eleven walk on. That that's that's mm-hmm. the what you saw out there on that field. And I'm not being disrespectful, guys. That's the easiest it'll ever get. Because no one's mixing up this Georgia team with, let's say, Bama's best or Clemson's best or the all-time best teams to make the playoff. This is a really good Georgia team. But if you think the next time you get back, it's going to be easier, you're sadly mistaken. And that's where the conversation really begins, because where does Michigan football go from here? Look, if you're happy that you just got invited, God bless, but I'm not that kind of fan. Michigan football has to make a decision on what they want to be. And I don't think it's going to be the SEC's pleasure pillow. That just doesn't no, jive with me. Mike, Michigan football is exactly what happened this year. You go out and you beat Ohio State, and you you manhandle them, and it's a great So year. you're a regional program with a national brand. That's what you're telling me. Yes. Congratulations. 